There is an animal that strikes fear into many humans. Many consider it to be an animal of evil. But is it really the beast that it is thought to be? In the Northern Hemisphere, there lives a hunter that has been driven to the most remote parts of the world. Legends and folklore told of its savageness and ferocity, so man feared them and drove them away. But what do people actually know about wolves? Wolves? Uh, probably run. What, do you mean like the wolves pulling the sledges things? Wolves are quite dangerous. Well, they're predators, but they still deserve a place in the wild, don't they? Well, I don't, I don't know much about them, actually, to tell the truth. Yeah, and the whole theory about when the moon, there's a full moon, you know, people get weird or something, or they act weird. Wolves? Yeah. Yeah, it's good thing. Werewolves? I think mm. pretty much anything is dangerous to something else, and I think that's the way things are meant to be. Well, we can use it. Put food in it. It seems that people still have mixed views about the big bad wolf. So do they believe that the wolves attack and kill people? Yeah. No. Where would they be where they could attack people? They're not anywhere they can attack people, are they? Except in the wild. But then, couldn't it have happened without anyone knowing? No. The wolf once roamed over the entire Northern Hemisphere. It was the most widespread mammal after humans, and it evolved into many variations. The grey wolf once ranged from Great Plains of the United States to the forests and the mountains of Canada. The Arctic wolf manages to survive in the frozen wastes of northern Canada and the Arctic. The European grey wolf once roamed across the whole of Eurasia at one time, including the British Isles. The Abyssinian and Indian wolves live further south in Ethiopia and India. The Mexican wolf was extinct in the wild for 20 years. Now it has been reintroduced into its former home in Mexico and the southern states of America. However, the worldwide population has drastically declined due to fierce persecution by man. Apparently there's no wolves guess... left. You guys used to have wolves, but yeah, then yeah, they all no died wolves. because I know they're like doing away with it. In Norway, they've just like shot loads of them and there's only like 20 left or something like that, I don't know. I think it's, I it's a sad extent. thing. Today, that fear is influenced by popular media. In the day after tomorrow, a pack of wolves attempt to kill a group of people in a freight ship. Good Lord. The most famous myth is of the werewolf. It has been a popular subject in horror movies for many years. Films such as An American Werewolf in London and Van Helsing both demonstrate this particular myth. Such stories and myths have formed a fake image of the wolf. Many believe it to be what werewolves do. Now we've all grown up with stories of the Red Riding Hood and Three Little Pigs and werewolves, and these are all stories that portray this animal in a negative light. So what are wolves really like? Wolf packs are similar to human families, they have a social order and packs tend to be peaceful to one another. The leaders of the pack are known as the Alpha Wolves. They have a strong bond and are usually the only members of the pack to have puppies. When wolf cubs are born, all the members of the pack help them to survive. And the key to surviving is hunting. Wolves eat a variety of food, including buffalo, deer, yak, gazelle, hare, insects and also nuts and berries. A wolf can eat approximately 5 to 12 pounds of meat a day, but can survive for long periods without eating. It is this fear that a predator kills anything for food, which makes reintroducing any large predator difficult. The experts know how important predators are in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem. So could we soon see wolves living here? Soon, 
wolves like these at the UK Wolf Conservation Centre could be allowed to roam freely in the Scottish Highlands, but previous reintroduction programmes in the United States have not been without protest. All you people supporting wolves out here, when a wolf kills a child, how are you going to feel? The British government has signed two conventions. One is the Burns Convention Act in 1982 and the Habitats Directive under the European Union. Both conventions state that member states should consider the conservation of species which are native to their territory and in particular those in need of strict protection. However, the government has been slow to act and many conservation charities are trying to get the government to remember its obligations. Are we ready to welcome wolves back into Britain? Well, I think that would be a bit of a silly idea, wouldn't it? Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I'd be honoured to see a wolf. You see foxes most of the time, but never a wolf. I think it's a great idea. I'm just a visitor. I'm here from Florida, the United States. Yes, reintroduce okay. the wolves. Hurrah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be too bothered, to tell the truth. I mean, you're going on about like the fox hunting sort of kind of things and, you know, let them run free. What the hell? I don't know. It'd probably scare my four-year-old to death if he thought there were wolves roaming wild in this country. The plan is for the wolves to prey on the 500,000 red and roe deer that are overpopulating the highlands, but some are worried that there is just not enough deer. So, obviously, in times of plenty, if food is, is plentiful, you're going to have quite often the dominant female breed, but it's possibly also a beta female. Now obviously if she has six cubs and a beta female who's plentiful will have six cubs, then the pack will start to increase. And you'll find that that pack size will only be maintained for a very short period of time, one, possibly two seasons. Then the packs will naturally disperse, they'll split up and segregate into smaller packs until they're naturally brought down. In that situation, what you sometimes find is that the, the a dominant female may even skip a season. She can self-regulate her reproduction system to the extent where if, if pack sizes are so great and she doesn't need to reproduce cubs, she won't.